In part 12, you saw how to export a Mentor Expedition design to an ODB++ directory. You also saw how to import this ODB++ directory into ANSYS SI Wave. In this part, we'll compare the stackups and modify the values of the passive components in the board. In ANSYS SI Wave, go to the Home tab and select the Layer Stackup Editor option to open it. Alternatively, you can use the hotkey Control L to open this dialog. Let's compare the Layer Stackup Editor in SI Wave with the Stackup Editor dialog in Mentor Expedition. Ensure the units are the same for both products, in this case millimeters. There are 12 metal layers and 13 dielectric layers for this board in SI Wave, as expected. The dielectric layer at the top comes into SI Wave with the name SMT. It stands for Surface Mount Top. The one at the bottom is SMB, or Surface Mount Bottom. I want to alert you to the fact that Mentor Expedition translates only a limited amount of material properties in version 8 of the ODB++ export. This can be illustrated through the attribute list file for one of the signal layers. To show this, we need to dig into the exported ODB++ database a bit. Go to the steps directory to the layer folder and open the attribute list file in a text editor. Also from the matrix folder, open up the matrix file. This has the stack up data. You can see that Expedition doesn't write out the material names in the ODB++ database. Look for Signal1 in the matrix file. Here the type is Signal, so SI Wave reads in this layer as a conductive body, and its material name defaults to Electronics Database ODB Conductor Signal1. This explains why all the metal layers have a different name in SI Wave, although in Expedition they're explicitly defined to be copper. This difference in the naming convention also occurs with dielectric layers. Now review the thicknesses of the dielectric layers. They're similar, but not exactly the same across both products. For example, dielectric 3 is 0.07 mm in Expedition and 0.074 mm in SI Wave. Dielectric 5 is 0.1 mm in both products. And so on. The metal thicknesses across the products are also comparable. For instance, Signal 1 is 0.02 mm thick in Expedition and 0.0177 mm thick in SI Wave. Plane 7 has a thickness of 0.034 mm in SI Wave and 0.03 mm in Expedition. And so on for the other metal layers. The slight differences you see here in the thicknesses are due to the number of decimal places shown in the two tools. SI Wave displays six decimal places, whereas Expedition is showing just two. They're actually the same thickness internally, so this is nothing to worry about. It is a good practice, however, to review the layer thicknesses after translation and make adjustments if necessary before you run an SI Wave simulation. Next, we'll handle the passive components. When SI Wave imports an ODB++ database, it attempts to translate RLC component values if they are assigned the appropriate property values in the database. If SI Wave doesn't find those properties for a component, it assigns default values to them. The defaults are 1 nanofarad for capacitors, 1 nanohenry for inductors, and 50 ohms for resistors. What you're seeing here are many resistors that have been assigned the default value of 50 ohms. But if you scroll down to the bottom of the components window, you'll see some components that don't have the default value. For example, select R807. Its value is 619 ohms. Resistor R816 is 464 kilo ohms. But then R93 is 50 ohms again. The same sort of thing can also happen for inductors and capacitors. To see why this happens, we need to dig into the ODB++ data once again. Go to the Component Positive Bottom folder. Open the component file in a text editor. Search for R816 in this file. Once you locate it, adjust the view to see all the information associated with this component clearly. You can see a line explicitly defined as property value 464,000. SI Wave read in this value field when importing the ODB++, which explains why R816 came in as 464 kilo ohms in SI Wave. If a component contains an explicitly defined value property in the ODB++ file, SI Wave reads it in and assigns it for that component. Now, if we instead look at this bunch of resistors from a different family, we see there is no defined value field and so these resistors will translate to 50 ohms in SI Wave. Open this family of resistors in SI Wave. 
Indeed, we see that R148 is 50 ohms, and the value for R746, which is also in this family, is also 50 ohms. This explains why there could be differences in the component values when translating an ODB++ database into SI Wave. Remember, the ODB++ export from Expedition is independent of SI Wave. SI Wave only imports the data that's present in the ODB++ file. Therefore, we need to ensure that all the components are assigned accurate values in SI Wave. This additional step wouldn't be necessary if the property values were assigned accurately and consistently within the original Expedition design. Fortunately, SI Wave provides a very easy method to modify the component values. First, export the RLC part values as shown here. Rename and save this data file to a desired location. This is a simple text file with the extension .dat. It contains the part names and their RLC values. You can easily edit the component values in this file. Here is a modified file showing the correct values of the components. I have grouped them by resistors, inductors, and capacitors. The first column displays part names. The second column identifies the part as a resistor, capacitor, or inductor. The third column is the component value. I have already changed the values for the part names to reflect the ones present in the bill of materials file for this PCB. When you change the value for a part name, all the components belonging to that part name are updated. Save this data file. Go back to SI Wave. From the Import tab, select the RLC Part Values option. Select the data file with the correct values. Press Open. The values of the components are immediately updated in SI Wave. Step through some of the resistors. All resistors take on the values from the data file. Capacitors and inductors are also updated with the values in the data file. If you're watching carefully, you may have noticed the Comp Value property field. In this ODB++ file, the Comp Value properties are defined for all the components. You may wonder if SI Wave could translate this Comp Value property instead of the Value field. Yes, this is indeed possible using something called an XML control file. It allows you to control the properties and the order SI Wave reads them. This XML control file can be prepared in a text editor. The type and value are the defaults, since these are properties generally defined in an ODB++ database. But here I've prioritized the ODB properties in order, so comp value is translated in preference to the value or any val fields. You can then use the XML control file when you import an ODB++ directory. The RLC values are then automatically populated from the specified ODB++ properties. This method is very powerful here because a particular property was explicitly defined in the ODB++ file for all the components. However, keep in mind that the earlier approach, using the component data file, will work for any ODB++ and any PCB from a third-party layout tool. It's important, therefore, to know that both methods are available to you. This concludes Part 13. In the next part, we'll translate from Metter Expedition to ANSYS HFSS 3D Layout and ANSYS Space Claim.